So we're going to move on to isolating and stretching um, in the left hand and how we can solve these and enable all the fingers to play with ease. So the common source of um, isolating and stretching often begins with the left thumb and it's a very frequent question and the question is quite indicative of the problem. The question is usually where does the left thumb go on the instrument? But the left thumb is attached to us and not the instrument. So what is consistent and what is dictating the relationship of the left thumb to the instrument is not the instrument but the hand. This belongs to my hand, not to the neck of the violin. So if I'm thinking, where do I put this? I'm thinking in an isolated way of my thumb being somehow split away from the hand by the neck. But if I think instead my thumb relates to my fingers, and all I need to do is make that consistent and constant, then it will tell me where to put that thumb. So the body is what's going to dictate where the thumb touches on the neck of the instrument as we move around. And in reality, it's going to move all over the place because we move all over the place. There is no one place for it, but there is one relationship for it. So if I put it up, you know, a, a common problem with the thumb is this. Very often with the thumb is a bit far backwards. Or the thumb starts in a position that's OK, but then stays there as the hand starts to move. Well, if I stay there as the hand starts to move, I'm starting to leave the thumb behind. So keeping it very simple, the thumb is going to make corresponding adjustments in the same direction that we are playing. That doesn't mean it goes opposite the finger that's playing, because it can't. It's always attached to this first finger side but it is going to make tiny adjustments every time I play a new finger. So if I'm moving from finger to finger, my thumb is moving with me. Can you see that? OK, so if the thumb is making adjustments, let's look at the other things that stop the forearm lending its support to each finger. And usually the result of the forearm not being able to lend its support is that we feel, and this is very common as a complaint, that the fingers are weak and that they have to press and that they can't reach. And when that's the case, it means that one of these adjustments that we're going to talk about now is not happening. So if I need my forearm and I hold my fingers down when they are done playing, how can my forearm move behind the next finger? And the answer is it can't. If I'm here on my first finger and I leave that finger down and then I go to my second finger when my first finger is not playing, I'm holding arm weight behind that finger that's got no sound and I don't really need. I'm also going to be jamming up my thumb, which is trying to make these little tiny adjustments. So the fingers do release in the same way that our legs and feet release when I walk. If I put down this foot, what does the other foot do? It comes off and it moves in the same direction. So when I allow the non-playing fingers, as we call them, to let go, all they do is they go back into their neutral curved position. They don't go sky high, they don't cling to the strings, they just go back into neutral so they can play again. And what this means is that my forearm can make these tiny adjustments to support each finger. And if you look down here, you'll actually see how those are moving. Can you see it moving? Now, if I started, if I held those fingers down, have a look at that forearm in the same position. Can you see it's stuck? So when it's stuck, by the time I get to my fourth finger, I have to isolate that finger movement. And if this finger has a distance, I'm going to stretch it. But if I let my thumb and my forearm move and the non-playing fingers release, I can just move there. That forearm lends its support and the little finger feels just fine. Can you see the difference? This would be if I hold them down. 
Now I'm trying to use that finger. It's an isolated movement and it's stretched. And my thumb's in the wrong place because he's pulling backwards and the forearm can't be with me. So the isolating and the stretching is usually a combination of the thumb and holding down the non-playing fingers that both disable the arm from making these teeny tiny adjustments so that it can continue to lend its support to the fingers. Um, I'm just wondering if our fingers are, are lifting, how do we get a, a good sort of memory in the body for geography around the instrument and intonation security? Okay, so one of, the, one of the beliefs is that by holding the fingers down, we can get back to them more quickly. Mm. But when we train the left arm with the taubman galansky approach, we actually use the forearm rotation to send the fingers from one note to the next. This, this is actually invisible. In the end, this is so small that you can't see. If I go from here to here, I'm actually rotating from finger to finger, mm -hmm. but you can't see it because it's been trained into the arm. So in a sense, it's throwing me. The sense is that it's throwing me to the next spot. Mm. Now, if I hold the fingers down, the only way I can get to the next spot is by using a little finger on its own, sort of pulling myself along with the finger. So the first thing that's going to happen is I won't get such good intonation. Mm. If I stand in one place with my body organized over that spot, I'm really in that spot. The arm is there, the finger's there, mm -hmm. hand is there. If I'm half over here, then my, I'm going to have to press to get that down. Mm -hmm. And when I press to get that down, I don't get particularly good intonation. Because I'm not over each note the same mm -hmm. way as if I move. to do is we learn to judge how far we're sending each finger mm. in the same way that you walk mm. you know when I walk I don't miss this next step unless something goes mm. wrong and if I see a puddle or something I have to step over I judge that distance and I send my foot over it and that's exactly the purpose of the, the invisible left arm rotation that's sending you from note to note mm -hmm. so it is different it's incredibly fast it's incredibly free and we don't really think of the fingers aren't really lifting. They're really releasing as part of that rotational movement. It's exactly the same thing as when we walk. If you hold onto my arm, you feel it. I'm going to make it big, okay, so that you can see it. But if I, so if I turn the arm to go from one to three, I would go this way first. I'm going to send my arm this way. As I move, it takes this off. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. So everything is packaged into that one movement. Mm -hmm. So I'm not thinking play, lift, play, lift. I'm just moving to the next note. I think one thing only, which is the next note. And the rotation is the host movement that sends me with mm -hmm. freedom to the next note, takes the old finger with it, and all the other bits with it too. Mm -hmm. So I'm not thinking releasing fingers, I'm just sending myself to the next note mm -hmm. and everything moves together. And when you play fast, it's, it's sort of just a more fluid motion basically. Yes, I mean it's going to be so small, yeah. right, that you, mm. it, you can't even see it unless mm. I actually make it bigger yeah. so that it's visible. Yeah. Now when we train the arm to do it, um, it's one of the few movements we do make bigger and we do do it slower in mm. order to feel how it's functioning. Mm -hmm. And then we work it down and we minimize it until it's just part of the playing. It mm -hmm. sinks into the playing. Mm. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah.